Today we're going to unbox and apply Biscotti Bay by Beltrass in the color Bombshell Blonde. Coming up. This featured wig style was sent to me by Wig Studio One for this review today. Go below the video, expand the description box. I'll attach a link directly to this style as well as the other Beltrass styles. If you have any questions for us, be sure to reach out to support at wigstudioone.com. And Beltress is always an automatic 30% off at Wig Studio One. I have not looked at this style yet. I am saving it for all of you. We have seen reviews on Biscotti Babe before. Um, this was one of their legacy styles, meaning that first batch of styles that came out by Beltress probably six years ago, seven years ago, something, when they first started to hit the scene was Biscotti Babe. I can remember exploring it back then and it was beautiful. I really loved it. Um, it was in the color Honey with Chai Latte. They had a very small color palette back then as well. Um, I can remember that I was a little bit newer to wigs and I really did not care for those long, the longer front pieces. But now with my knowledge um, and my experience, I think I can make this into something that I'll really love so let's get started with the unboxing. So Biscotti Babe is a short to mid-length curly style. And if I remember correctly, the curls were more of a looser tousled spiral than some of the, uh, the choppier shattered textures that we see from Beltress. So let's check it out. All the familiar packaging by Beltress. And actually their packaging has not changed um, much at all since the beginning. Same telltale box. So there lies Biscotti Bay. Okay. Looking at the tags, Biscotti Bay, heat friendly. There's some care instructions on the inside of the hang tag. All right, so let's remove the net. You pretty much always see that there's a weave pattern there um, on the part when it comes directly out of the box. And I do my best to break that up. Some are more stubborn than others. Now this one is a full monofilament top as opposed to the monofilament part. So it should be a little bit easier because we have more space to work with and breaking up that part. So there's what it looks like right out of the box. So let's take a look at the inside of the cap real quick while we have this out. Um, this is one of their full mounted filament tops. So you'll see, still see that temple to temple lace front. It does not extend back into the ear tab. There's a seam that adjoins that single monofilament top. This one seems to be done really well in terms of being able to see through to the illusion of scalp from the monofilament features. And then there's a nice brushed velvet ear tab, an extended uh, brushed velvet nape, and these strap type adjusters. Now, Beltras has a lot of stretch, and I typically have to cinch it in as far as it can go just so that it does not roll around on my head so I can get a secure fit. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that adjustment before I apply. I'm also going to remove the tags. So I'm still gonna to wanna to shape this style really well. Um, it doesn't matter what kind of cap it is, I shake it. It starts to wake up that fiber. And a lot of times I'll just get my hands in there at the root and just gently pull to further wake up the fiber. I can do that with my hands or like a wide tooth comb. And then I look at the parting space and sort of break that up with my fingers. This will set free the movement. When you have a hand tied monofilament top, each one of those fibers are hand knotted in there. This allows from, for some really nice natural movement because each of them can kind of move um, on their own independently from one another, but you still need to uh, get in there and wake up those knots for the best and most natural look. Okay, 
So I'll work on this part a little bit more once I have it applied. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply it now. Um, I want to talk about this color with you real quick and then we'll go through some specs and then we will fix, we'll fix up our Miss Biscotti Babe here. So I always like to swirl around on that monofilament, lace and monofilament. So I do notice that the front pieces don't hang as uh, lifeless around my face as they once did. It looks like there might be a little bit more body. All right, so let's talk about this color Bombshell Blonde. The color code is an R12, a 60, an 88, and a 1001. So what you're gonna see here is a lot of that 60, which is white. And then they've gone in and added, they've added some pale gold blonde and just a natural type blonde, a satiny natural type blonde. And then all of that is supposed to be on a light brown root. Now I have seen some variability in the root uh, this particular piece does look like it's really, really light brown and it's more ash in tone. Sometimes the cameras can emphasize shadows, which makes the rooting look a little bit darker than it is. But from my eye, this looks terrific. That's my widow's peak peeking through there. Okay, so that's what, what this is. Now, this is a really cool color. Cool as in tone. Um, there's a lot of white on this. So you're going to see um, just a really bright, light blonde appearance. And it's, uh, it's more neutral. It's got a lot of cool in there. But it does have some warmth as well. I have seen applications of this color where the warmth is a really yellowish kind of color, which really does warm it up in certain cases. So I think I'll go ahead and just mess with this style a little bit while I'm explaining some of the features and specs. And so we talked about uh, this having a little bit of a longer front piece. It's anywhere from 10 to 13 inches all the way down. And as I mentioned, there seems to be a little bit more body in these fibers than there once was. That's gonna give, give a little bit of buoyancy to the curl. It's going to emphasize some of the contour around the face. So it definitely behaves a lot better than it did around the face. So overall 13 inches all the way around. Now I think that side measurement starts a little farther down because it does give the bit of a, an illusion of an angle. And there may be a slight angle coming down, but it's ever so slight, it's not too dramatic. So it should just hit the collar on most people, depending on your measurements. I am going to continue to work on this part because I really do not like those weaved parts. So it really doesn't scream wig to me. It just isn't the way I like to style my hair. Notice I said hair. If it's on my head, it's my hair. <laughs> it can be a wig all at once in the box, but if it's on my hair, or if it's on my head, it's my hair. Okay, I'm just picking and fluffing, separating. It looks like we can get some pretty fluffy volume here, which I really like. I just pick and fluff, swirl around on the monofilament, can just continue to work it and wake it up some take longer than others. So sometimes I have to use the heat of my hand or if it's super stubborn, I'm gonna have to get out a heat appliance to make it behave. Um, this is a heat friendly style by Beltress, a part of that cafe collection. You know, this is um, 
this is really reminiscent to me of the John Renault's Julianne. I just realized, I just now realized how much like Julianne it actually is. I actually have one behind me I want to show you. This is the Julianne in Palm Springs Blonde. That's John Renault's Julianne. And all the measurements are like identical to Biscotti Babe here. Even the wave and the curl pattern. Now, uh, the John Renault's Julianne is completely hand tied. It's going to lay a little bit differently. There's no permatease on Julianne. In fact, there's very low to no permatease on Biscotti Babe either. But you're going to see open wefts on the sides and back of Biscotti Babe. How similar. Wow. I never realized that. And then comparing the bombshell with the Palm Springs Blonde here, bombshell just has a kiss of warmth um, compared to the very ashy, cool shades of the Palm Springs Blonde. So what do you guys think? It's sometimes hard for me to see in the camera. I can't see much detail there. So it looks like they are bringing a, a stark band of this white all the way up to that lace front. Um, but I feel like it's easy to break up just by messing with the part, maybe pulling some of those fibers back in a way. So I think I like it just parted a little bit left of center here. I will continue to work on that front until I get it just how I want it. I didn't see a weight measurement on this. I think it was around between four and five ounces is my guess. It feels really lightweight on the head. Each one of these fibers is a nice, luxurious, silky feeling, like a buttery feeling, I should say. It's a little bit different than silky. You are not going to get a lot of volume um, on, and lift on the top here. Just because there's no permatease up there, it's a full monofilament top. I mean, you can wake up those knots and pinch in a little bit, but without some sort of product, I don't think you're going to get sustainable height. Um, now you can mess around with the front. So if you go, if you sort of go against the grain of the fiber, the way it was set in the box, you can get a little bit of natural lift that way as well. But the volume is very soft and it's done by the fibers. It's the work is done by the fiber. There's just no palpable permatease anywhere on this cap. Okay, so you saw me pull Biscotti Babe right out of the box with a few shakes, a little bit of messing with the part and a little pick and fluff. This is what you get. Very much improved since the first edition of this style. So let's try with glasses. I know it's gonna be great. Indeed it is. Um, beautiful between the ear and the ear tab. Very, very glasses friendly style. Thanks for joining me for this unboxing and review of Biscotti Babe by Beltress and the Color Bombshell Blonde. We'll see you soon on Tazza's Wig Closet at Wig Studio One.